Hello and welcome to Extreme Automation. In this video, I'll be talking about how to extract data from different tables that are present on Microsoft Word document. And we'll be fetching all this information from this Word document and we'll put it here in the Excel sheet through VBA code. All right, so we have already listed down all the headers that we want to extract. And the, there are two tables here. One is in orange, you can see that is first table and the one that is in green is the second table in the Word document. All right, so let us start writing code for it. So first of all, I will create a sub procedure. Let's say the name of sub procedure I keep is extract data. All right, so since we want to deal with Microsoft Word document, so we need to create an object of Word application as well as the document. All right, so before we use it, we need to initialize it. And before we initialize it, we need to import the references in here. So we need to import this Microsoft Word object library. And once we import it, we would be able to say word application like this. So dim wd as word dot application. This is initialization of word application. Now we can launch a word application using set wd equals new word dot application. Or instead, if you want to replace these two statements and do want to do it in one statement, you can use new keyword here only while initialization and that will create a new instance of that application. All right, next is we need to create the document. So document is nothing but word dot document type object. So we have created two objects. Now we need to say here that the document that we are going to open should be visible to us. Otherwise it will be running in background. All right, so WD dot visible equals true makes it visible for us. And we want to open a specific file. So WD dot documents dot open we use to open the document file or word document file and in the argument you need to give the path of that document file all right so the document which we are going to access here in this example is in same location where i have this workbook so i'll use active workbook dot path and then the name of document with a slash so form dot docx that is the document that i'm trying to access you can give any path that you are using now since the return type of this function is an object of document type therefore I need to use set doc equals this because the doc that I have initialized earlier is word.document. If I do not use set here it would give us a compile time error. So you can see when I try to run it without using set it gives me error that invalid use of property. right? And if I use set then it won't give that error. Alright so it is important to use it because variables we directly give without using set keyword but for objects we need to use set keyword all right since table is also part of this document and that is also an object it is not a value that we are going to store so again for tables also we need to use set keyword so set tables equals the document object dot tables right so it will give all the tables of that document and it would save it in tab tables object all right so let's say we want to print the count of tables that we have in document. So I use message box tables dot count. Now we see here in the word document on the right side, we have two tables here in this document. And if I try to run this piece of code, I should get two as output. So it opens the document and you see here in the message box, it prints two. That means there were two tables present on the page. All right, so we do not want to print the count of the tables here. We want to access the values of the table, right? So, but we know that the values would always be inside this tables object. So we need to access from the tables itself. All right, so I create another variable or another object you can say of type worksheet. So dim sh as worksheet and I say that sh is nothing but active sheet. Since I'm going to use this sheet all the time, so therefore I am using an object of it. All right, so here you can see on the table we have on the left side, we have name, age, address, with website, phone number and email. But we want the values of second column and we want the row wise values. So first of all, we need to access table one. So I use tables and then in index we give one. So that means I'm talking about first table. And let's say I want to access first row. So for that we have dot rows. And if I give the index one, that means I'm talking about first row. I try to print it and see what value it holds if I use tables one rows one and then I would be doing some modifications here. Now I run it. So here it launches the application. It opens the document. It sets the sheet and in the message box, what should it give before I display in the message box? Let's say I uh, add a watch here and see the values inside this 
this rows so i select this portion and i right click on it and then i click on add watch now you see that it is not holding any value but it is of type variant because it is an object actually and if you see here uh, if you use dot range dot text after it it gives you the value of that particular row or that particular selection so for that entire row you get the value which is the first column as well as second column now you want to access let's say only the first column so for that you would use uh, dot cells and you give the index if i use one here you would get the name and if you get two here you would get the actual value of that name so kamal gedar would be the value all right so instead of this if i use this i would be getting that particular value that i'm going to print now i do not want to print in a message box i want to write it in a particular cell of the sheet so i see here let's say this is third row and let's say i talk about third row for now so third comma first column dot value equals this thing all right so this way i would be able to extract the name from that first table similarly i want to extract other six values all right so i just copy and paste the statements so from 1 to 6 you can see here everything is same but i want to access different rows so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and always i want to ex extract the second column value so this should do the the part that i want to do and if i just execute it i would see here all the values are popping in now if you have observed that the values are having non printable characters and you want to clean the value so we have a clean function in the worksheet and if i want to use the worksheet functions i'll use application dot worksheet function and then the name of function so clean is a function that would clean the value right so i'll surround all the values that i'm going to write in cells with this so i'll just put application dot worksheet function dot clean for all these values one by one all right so you see here for all the six rows we need to repetitively do lot of things all right so we can simplify this thing right because maintenance part you have seen we have done a lot right if these rows were let's say 100 then this would have been a more tedious task all right so we'll see how to simplify this part of code and let's say i use a for loop to repeat this action so i know that there are six rows so i'll say for c equals 1 to 6 and then next all right so here you can see the column index and the or you can say the column index of the sheet and the uh, row index of the table are varying so i can make it dynamic right so instead of this i can put c here and c here as well right for rows right otherwise everything remains hard coded you can say tables would be always one for this cells would always be two for this all right so we can now remove the part that we have written i mean the six statements that we have written earlier and only three statements are enough even if we have 100 rows still we would be requiring these three statements all right so instead of c if i use i to make it more clear because c some time uh, get confused with the column index but here we are talking about uh, the column of the excel sheet but the row of that table in the document all right so i do not want you to get confused so i use i as index all right so you run it and you would see the values getting written in the excel uh, sheet all right so you see here i clear all the values and let's say i want to run this let's see here we have kamal gather and age and address and website and phone number and you also notice that we do not have that non printable characters in the leading or tailing of that particular string all right so next is second table we have uh, around seven or eight rows here and again we have two columns so we just need to copy and paste it and we just need to change this to the number of rows that we have here in the second table so i'll use from 1 to 8 and here the column index would not be 1 or not be i directly but it would be 6 plus i because till 6 we already have something in the excel sheet but 6 plus i would be 7 if i is 1 all right so starting from 7 we will be moving forward we want to access only table 2 so i need to use table 2 cells would always be 2 uh, here and here uh, i get some error because i didn't update the table index so it should be 2 and uh, row index is i that is correct let's run this now and see what it is printing 
so it still gives me error okay because i have closed the document all right so the code was running and i have closed the document in between and it is not able to access it now all right so the only thing that i need to do now is i need to rerun this piece of code so i just terminate this uh, execution and i run it and before i run it again i let's say put more statements to close the document and create the word op application automatically once the code is completed and i also uh, free up the spaces that I have used for these objects. So set document equals nothing, set sheet equals nothing and set WD which is word application equals nothing. All right, so it is time to run it now. You would see that it will open the document. It will extract the information and it will close it automatically. And if I scroll right here, you would see all the values are extracted from the word document. All right, so this has simplified a lot. Now you uh, can assume that uh, uh, we have we can have n number of documents and if we want to extract from all the the documents which have same template or same structure then uh, we can iterate through all the files one by one and we can do this the only thing that need to be taken care of here is that we always write here in the third row which is not right we need to make it dynamic so to write in the last available row which is blank so i use lr equals sheet cells rows dot count comma one and end excel up row plus one all right so that that gives me the last available row and instead of uh, three i'll use lr so now if i rerun it it won't be writing in the third row it would be writing in the last available row so i am running it multiple times you see that every time it inserts a new record all right so now you can run it for different files and see how we extract different information for from all the documents All right, so now uh, that part is a bit uh, tricky here. When we talk about different files, it is important that you open all the different files one by one and then iterate through all the files and repeat this part of uh, code that I have written here. So I leave this portion for you to try out because there are a lot of other uh, videos available in, on my channel where I am accessing different sheets or files in a folder or maybe in different locations. So you can refer those videos and try to merge the ideas from both the videos and then you can reach to a stage where you would be extracting data from multiple word documents and have it in same excel sheet if you have any questions feel free to write to me in the comment section i'll be more than happy to reply to your questions thank you we'll see you again